My name is Anne Dreiber. What I want to do in this course is to give you an introduction to understand abuse. Abuse is horrific in what it does to people. And what we want to do in this course is to give you a basic understanding of what abuse looks like, what its effects are, give you a biblical understanding about it, and, and to help equip you to have insight into it so you're better able to care for people that you know who are being abused and also to encourage you to do further study. This is an introduction to, to, the, to the horrible issue of abuse and we hope that by following this course it will help equip you to see it, to help equip you to be good at caring for people, better equipped at caring for people and also encourage you to do further study in this area. So when is it abuse? Now, this lesson is largely based on a book, When Home Hurts, by Jeremy Pierre and Greg Wills. And they say, when is it abuse? They ask that question. And their answer is, abuse occurs as a person in a position of greater influence uses their personal capacities to diminish the personal capacities of those under their influence in order to control them. Because God made people as embodied souls, these personal capacities are both physical and spiritual. Now here you see in their definition of their understanding of when something is abuse, it's not just someone being selfish and mean. It's more than that. It's they're using who they are, their position in life, to be able to control someone else. And this control is harmful to the other person. And you see, God made us to be physical and immaterial, to be physical and spiritual. And these two things, are aspects of who we are as people, are not separate entities but they're intertwined so affects abuse affects people in all aspects of who they are so they then go on to identify abuse from two directions as you can already see hinted at here so the first is the manipulative intent and behavioral forcefulness of the one in a position of influence so the one that's abusing manipulates the other and uses different ways to force their way their intention on the victim and then secondly the diminishing effect on those under their influence. Abuse is harmful, hurtful, damaging to, to the people that are being abused. A lot of the time, people might think, oh, I'll just keep the peace, uh, make sure I don't upset the person too much, the person that's being abusive. But abuse has a bit diminishing, harmful, destructive effect on those who are being abused. So let's look at some of the effects of abuse that Pierre and Wilson talk about. The abuse desecrates the personhood of the one being abused. Again, we're made in God's image. And abuse goes against the effects, it harms that uh, personhood that God made us to be. An abusive person uses their personal capacities to force other people to deliver on their personal desires. So they use whatever it is, their strengths, whatever privilege they have, and by pr privilege I mean uh, position or, or authority that they have so that the other person is forced to do what they want. And the force that they exert inflicts damage. It weakens someone and therefore makes that person easier to control. And the person most harmed by the, the people, sorry, the most harmed by the abuser are those most dependent on them. They'll think about spousal abuse or parent con and children. The pe the, a lot of the time, those who are most harmed are those who are most dependent on the abuser. Think of it when it happens in the church context, when it's a church leader with a tremendous position of responsibility towards other people. And when that is uh, spiritual responsibility is abused, it's extremely harmful on the people who are under them, who are abused. So the greater the influence a person has over others, the greater p potential for harm. So what's the motive of an abuser? Personal entitlement. The abuser believes they're entitled to having their desires met and treats people that way. So they go through life, th life thinking, I should get what I want. And you're the one that has to give them what they believe that they, they should get. They get. Usually abusive people see themselves as better than they are. And they're not aware that they see themselves wrongly. Their lens is always rose tinted. As I said, they don't, they're not aware that they see others wrongly. They look at people 
from looking at them, are you going to give me what I want? So they objectify them. Are they going to help me or are you going to get in my way to getting me what what I want? And this is something that it, they're not, it's something that comes naturally to them. They're not necessarily consciously deciding, now I'm going to do this. A lot of the time when people ask, do they do this deliberately? It's hard to believe that people can be abusive. And sometimes people say, but is that intentional? Do they do, they do that deliberately? Here we see it's a, it's a way of life. It's a way of viewing people, of seeing them as a means or a hindrance into getting what they want. And that comes intuitively. And the more that the abuser acts towards victims out of this mindset, out of these perceptions, the more their interactions fall into a pattern. So they lose the ability to recognize the original intention behind the behavior. And they automatically interact in a controlling way with those they perceive they can control and differently towards those they perceive they cannot. That's also one of the reasons that abusers can be different with different people. Someone that they control, they will treat differently than someone they cannot control. So if someone's not being controlled by the abuser, they might have a hard time believing that the abuser can be as, as harmful as people who are raising the issue of abuse are saying. So who is an abuser? A person should be considered abusive when they have established a pattern of using personal capacities to force others to bring about good for themselves. This can be control, called control. So their way of relating is that they manipulate people to relate to people in a way that forces them to do what the abuser wants. The controlling people. To control is to diminish the capacity of, capacities of others so they're left in a position where they must conform. So again, it's more than just being selfish. Abusive behavior, controlling behavior, is harmful to the people who are being controlled. And these attempts to control can be physical or non-physical. I've had many people say to me when trying to help people that are, are being what's called emotionally abused, they'll say, oh, at least not being hit. That's it. Understandable that people say that, but it's showing they don't understand abuse and how incredible, incredibly harmful non-physical abuse is. So an abusive person will manipulate others using whatever form of strength they have at their disposal. Intellectual superiority, social superiority, conversational superiority, positional superiority, or any other form of advantage. And what I mean by this is what they're better at, so that could be the really good at talking. They know how to talk their way out of anything. It could be that they have a position above the other person. It could be that they're smarter. Or in a social context, that they have a higher position in, in society. They'll use whatever uh, strength they have or privilege they have and they use it to their advantage so that they can get their own way and they can control other people. So let's look at some terms and look at an explanation of them. So manipulative intent. This is the intention to gain personal control over another person. You're not trying to determine if the person intends their actions to be abusive, but they intend their actions to gain control over a person under the influence. That goes back to what I just said a few minutes ago. It's not that they're saying, are they, is, is it deliberate what they're doing? Are they, do, are they being deliberately abusive? What they're wanting is to get their own way. They want to get control of the other person that the other person does and is who they want them to be. By behavioral oppression is the degree of coercion a person's behavior has on those under the influence. How much effort is being used to incapacitate another person's freedom of choice? So it's really important to recognize that behavioral oppression occurs on a spectrum of greater and lesser, lesser degrees of forcefulness and persistence. So it's not just all the same. They don't treat people in exactly the same way. So forcefulness is the degree of threat a person faces for not conforming to the manip manipulative intent of the abuser. What's going to happen to them if they don't do what the abuser wants? And persistence is the degree to which the manipulative behaviors that, that sorry, persistence is the degree to which the manipulative behaviors have established themselves as patterns of the relationship. 
So the greater the degree of forcefulness and the greater the degree of persistence, the more clearly abusive a person's actions will be. Behavioral oppression is both soul impacting and body impacting. So one embodied soul is using their spiritual and physical capacities to hinder these same capacities in another. So again, I keep going back to saying it's not just being selfish, it's about having control over someone else. And that control is harmful to the victim. So regarding the soul, the behavior of an abusive person will include non-physical interaction. And usually this is verbal and non-verbal means of communication. Now this is a long quote here. So regarding their body, when an abusive person cannot adequately control others with words and maneuvers, they will often physically force their will on others. Threatening gestures, shaking a fist, slamming the wall next to someone, leads to acts that physically limit someone else. Blocking an exit, gripping an arm, shoving. I knew a man who would put the couch in front of the living room door so his wife could not go out, go upstairs at night and he would shout and run and rage at her. These acts can lead to more hostile behaviours that actively inflict pain, squeezing hard, smacking, and even do injury, punching and kicking. Left unchecked, this often results in extremely dangerous physical onslaughts, beating with fists, assaulting with other objects. All of these behaviours have a profound effect on the body, both visible, and bruises, cuts and injuries, and invisible traumatic reactions, physical problems from anxiety. Abuse is really, really serious and has a, a, a huge effect on the victims. Another aspect here, what's known as emotional abuse, which we will be talking about in this course, the more you give into it, the further the abuse, um, the worse the abuse gets and the more likely that there will be physical abuse, like by physical abuse, I mean physical harm, hitting and such like. So the more you give in to an abuser, the worse that things become. A lot of people, when, you, when they have an abusive person, they think, oh, just keep the peace, don't upset them, because they see what they're like when they don't get the wrong way. But the more that you give in to this person in that way, they know they'll get the wrong way, and the abuse will get worse and worse. So it's really important that the the, the all of the people that are involved get appropriate help to be able to to relate to the situation in a wise way. So definition and types of abuse. This is something my, my own definition of emotional abuse is behavior that's designed to control, intimidate, subjugate, punish, or isolate another person, resulting in the victim becoming emotionally, behaviorally, and mentally dependent on the abuser. So you see, again, it's much more than being selfish. It's a, it's a whole way of relating to someone so that they're under, under their control. And the victim is harmed. They're, they're totally dependent on the abuser and their emotions, their behaviors, and in their mind. So there are different types of abuse. What's known as emotional, or psychological, spiritual abuse, sexual abuse, physical abuse. So continue to think about this whole awful topic of abuse, the different themes of scripture, doctrines, are these perspectives through which sorry, these perspectives through which we view the problem of domestic abuse. So it's not just take a Bible verse here, what does the Bible say about marriage? And then take a, Bi a Bible verse, but it's looking at scripture as a whole to be able to uh, have a thorough understanding of what scripture says to be able to understand the situation of people and to provide help. Firstly, this image of God. All people are made in the image of God, and that's displayed in our capacity both to perceive, to understand the world as people, and to influence one another as people. We have sin, Genesis 3, which dis disorders the design, and it twists, warps the ability to understand, to perceive the world rightly, and to relate to others in a righteous way. And then we have love. Love is God's design for human relationships. He's designed us to love one another, and lo to love other people means you, you relate to them for what's best for them, what builds them up, and it's at the cost to self. And this is the exact opposite of abuse. Abuse is, I relate to you for what I want, and it's a cost to you. Oppression. Oppression is not just suffering in general, but it's a unique form of suffering 
which involves the intentional sin of those with greater capacity against those with less. So a use of power to harm another person. We think of marriage. Marriage is designed by God for a man and a woman, and they live out an exclusive form of love with each other, where the husband leads in sacrificing his interest for his wife, and the wife follows him in freedom. And then we think about the church. The church is filled with people who are indwelled by the, the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. And they seek to be a community together that honours what's true and good and thwarts what is false and evil. So let's think about identifying abuse in different contexts. So we, in this course, we will be looking at patterns of behaviour involved in abuse and their effects on the victim. And this will help you to be able to identify abuse in different contexts. And that will come up in future lectures. And then looking at the impact of abuse on victims. So abuse is a sin that affects personhood, as God designed it. So when someone is being abused, it affects who they are as people made in the image of God. It can affect the whole personhood as image bearers of God. Again, this is something that we'll be exploring in future lectures.